Please welcome 2016 UP Athletic Hall of Fame inductee, Ryan Nelson. I'd just like to thank the selection committee. Um, just an amazing honor. Um, very humbling, the inductees this year and in the past. Um, <laughs> I've kind of always been one of those people, always kind of looking to the top of the stairs or the top of the mountain, never really appreciating uh, maybe the steps that I'd already taken. Um, <laughs> it, it always felt that when I, I thought about myself, like, oh, okay, I. I'm pretty good, I deserve that. Uh, something would always be there to humble me a little bit or, or check me down. Um, it was a surprise this summer when I got the, the email from Buzz, um, you're gonna be an inductee this year. Uh, I started thinking, oh, okay, yeah, maybe I was pr uh, pretty good, I was great at the university. Um, so I live in Charleston, South Carolina. We. Uh, had a little storm roll through, a little mild hurricane, which <laughs> no one really has to deal with here, but you learn to live with them. And so we're doing our yard work and um, never seen poison ivy before. And uh, as we're doing the yard work, I, uh, apparently I got into it pretty good and all up and down my arm. And, and during that time period, I was thinking about the things I would say when I was here. It's like, oh, okay, bring yourself down a little bit. You know, poison ivy, bring you back. Um, a few days after that, um, started thinking about, you know, what would I talk about? And uh, my wife and my family here, my wife um, had, had cooked some stir fry, and I love sriracha, and it was on the table and eating my stir fry. I was like, well, I need a little more spice to it, and popped the top of the sriracha directly into my eye and uh, rushed to the sink and, and washed that out. So uh, multiple checks down on the, the ego, if there is any at the time. <laughs> Um, but truly just amazing, the, the inductees this, this year, um, the things that they've accomplished at the school and afterwards, it's truly incredible. Um, and I'd like to thank also my family, uh, my wife and children, uh, my parents, um, the patience they've, they've shown for me and my development, uh, the opportunities that I've been given, uh, truly thankful for it. Um, when I was getting ready to, to go to school, uh, hopefully to play golf. I got a very late start playing competitively. Uh, I kind of grew up playing every sport. Uh, my grandfathers and my dad and my uncle were, were golfers and it was just, just another thing. And later in high school, you know, okay, I'm, I'm pretty good. I might have an opportunity to go play somewhere. Um, I desperately wanted to, to leave Oregon. I grew up 35 minutes from here. Um, it didn't happen. I talked to a few schools, but Mauro Potestio was a coach at the time and ended up offering me a, a scholarship. And I, I really also, my second goal there was to play at a Division I school. And to get such a late start in tournament golf, um, to have that opportunity, I was so thankful for it. And I didn't know a single person at University of Portland when I came here. And my parents dropped me off. I lived in Shipstad, the first uh, dorm on the way in, lived on the fourth floor. Okay, I meet my roommate for the first time, parents leave, okay, we'll find out what this is like. Um, they came back two days later and the four-story trash chute was overflowing with beer cans and beer bottles and I had made a ton of friends on the floor, so <laughs> it's easy to make friends, I think, in those circumstances. Um, uh, also, another way we kind of made friends, uh, I ended up getting a fake ID my freshman year. Um, there's a, a tradition called the crawl, where you go on all the bars all the way back to the university. I, I did that four times. Um, my 21st birthday fell on the crawl on my senior year. Uh, all the bartenders were surprised when I celebrated my 21st birthday. Uh, but they, they're all a good, good humor there. Um, really, the best, I guess, to appreciation of University of Portland, um, our, my golf coach at the time, Mauro Potestio, 
um, no longer with us, but I don't know if, if you didn't have direct um, relationship with him, if you'd been to any men's basketball game, the 50 plus years prior to his passing, he was in the front row with the bow tie, little Italian man. Um, they, they showed some pictures there. Uh, he got to select all of our clothes at the time. Um, <laughs> We, uh, it was just truly, he, he's just the sweetest man. Um, didn't have a great depth of knowledge about golf, but, you know, it didn't, it didn't really matter at the time. Um, he, he truly loved, you know, he, he's, his parents were Italian immigrants. He was a first generation um, American, and, um, but he still, he loved his wine. Uh, he, he had a long black filter for his cigarettes that he told us took all the bad stuff out of him, so it was fine. Um, he still ran every day, which was amazing. Uh, I think when we got to school, he was 72 years old and still running every day. Um, <laughs> we, one of our first team functions was his 50th wedding anniversary. So it was all a bit of a shock. I, I had expectations of the college program and, and then the reality of, of University of Portland. But, it was fantastic, the, the friends and teammates we made. Um, a, a few stories. The shirt that they showed was, he loved the outlandish things. And I think the same year, we had these navy blue pants, and we couldn't match it with any of the shirts that we'd gotten. And he said, no, 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 those are purple. They go with the purple shirt. Like, we're just solid purple. Like, oh my god, <laughs> okay. We're, we're going to take over the, the selection of the, uh, the outfits from now on. But, um, two short stories about Moro. Um, one of our first trips my, my freshman year, um, we fly to Reno, Nevada. We, instead of renting a van, and only five people make the trip, so instead of renting a van, we get two cars. And I end up in the car with two upperclassmen, and Moro and two of the other guys end up in the other car and go driving, okay, we leave the airport, go driving, we're gonna hit the main drag in Reno, as small as it is, and we're in front, and we miss the turn, because uh, so we're in the middle lane, well, okay, we'll just go down and go to the next exit. We go down, and, and they never kind of show up to turn around, it's like, well, well, we'll head to the hotel, I guess, and we get there, and the other two guys in the car, my, my roommate, the other freshman, white-faced. So what, <laughs> what's going on? He says, well, Morrow, stopped in the middle lane of the interstate, <laughs> reversed 50 feet to get to the exit. Like, oh my God, and I don't know if any of you are, remember the, the cartoon, Mr. Magoo, but he, he had a little bit of the, that kind of face, a little bulbous nose, and, and just that just sweet kind of uh, ignorance of, of his surroundings. It, and so we shortly thereafter, uh, all the upperclassmen would, would take over the turns driving. He didn't, he didn't have to drive anymore after that. Um, and the other story, my first tournament we played in, we played Cal State Northridge, and they hosted the tournament. And um, if you can imagine, we're standing on the 16th tee. It's a very elevated tee shot. You can see the whole valley, and the 15th hole runs this way. We play down 16, a little 17th, and then the 18th hole. And as we're standing on the 16th tee, my teammate tells me, well, last year, tomorrow, we're during the tournament, and we're standing on the tee box, and one of the guys in the group from one of the other schools tees off on this huge elevated tee. And as the ball's in the air, my teammate, Dugan, looks down in the fairway, and here comes Morrow in his golf cart going across the fairway. And he said, no way. There's no chance this happens. Boom! Right on top of his golf cart. And he doesn't stop, doesn't hesitate, keeps right on driving to the next, he's like, oh my God. And he apologizes to the, to the guy from the other team, like, I'm so sorry. Uh, it, luckily, it didn't bounce into a water hazard or anything. They continued to play, and, and Morrow had a very raspy kind of deep voice, and Dugan sees him a couple holes later, and he's, Dugan, did you hear that loud explosion? <laughs> So we're at this tournament, standing on this tee box, hearing this story for the first time. And in practice rounds, all five of the team play together. It's extremely slow. We're crying laughing. We play the hole. We play 17. We're standing on 18 tee box. 
And we're all kind of just reminiscing already over the story and looking back at 16. And there's Morrow driving down the 15th hole. And he's looking for us. He'd gone in and he's coming back out. And so we, you know, Morrow, we wave and, and he sees us and he, he turns the golf court and starts heading right towards us. And, no, no, Morrow, Morrow, no. And we stop. And in California, they have a lot of water hazards, but a lot of the creeks are dry. And he drives straight toward us and wham! Straight into a dry creek bed. So I wasn't sure what I'd gotten myself into at the time, but uh, just an amazing experience here. Really, <laughs> I had a great time. Our golf team, we had a lot of laughs. Uh, Morrow, Morrow being the heart of it. Um, again, just the sweetest man. He cared for us so much. Uh, we were invited every year over to his house, him and Ann. Um, took us authentic Italian food um, and never owned a driver's license. Um, it was just a, a really old school kind of uh, household they had. Uh, really appreciate the time here, uh, learning how to, how to be part of a community that maybe you don't have a lot in common with to begin with, but you find those, those connections. And uh, always be grateful for the University of Portland for uh, the person I've become and uh, really thankful to, to, to be here. So thank you again.